Yeah, it should be a cracker tonight and two players from opposite ends of the eight ball spectrum in many ways. Phil Harrison, a member of this sport's golden generation from the early 2000s. Very nearly a golden duck to start tonight. That would have been some, some scenes to get us going. But uh, in off the break for Phil, we'll bring Tom to the table. So yeah, Phil, one of the one of the golden oldies, but still very much one of the best players in the world. And then you got Tom Jones, a former junior world champion, who's still right at the beginning of his eight ball journey. And I dare say, if he goes on to have a quarter of the career that Phil Harrison has had, he'll have done pretty well indeed. But that was a pretty brutal in off the break there to uh, to kick things off. So it brings Tom to the table, cue ball in hand behind the line for an in off on the break. And he's going to choose at yellows to get us started. A simple game, this. If you've never seen us before, it's the one you are very familiar with, I don't doubt. Pick your colour set, you pot your balls, you pot your eight ball, you win the frame. Four of those will win you a match. And we've got four players here tonight. They'll play each other in a round robin format. Top of the league at the end of the night goes through. Should a match be level at the end of the match clock, however, which is 20 minutes, then we will take the draw. And we will take the result at whatever at 20 minutes as well. 30 seconds on the shot clock until the final five of each match and then we drop it down dramatically to 15. That was, uh, that was a fairly sensible shot that from Tom Jones. I don't think he really fancied getting the pot but he did make sure he was pretty careful with the cue ball. And he's not left Phil much to go out here. Well, he has popped the red on the left hand side but why would Phil feel the need to take this on? I think the one thing for Tommy will be very disappointed with his first shot because it was a decent opportunity. All the yellows are in one area of the table. It needed a cannon or two, but yeah, he'll be disappointed not to uh, make a better effort than that. That's completely intended by Phil bumping the eight ball there. You can see he lined that up, wanted to get that line. And the reason why is now if Tom Jones decides to go, which Phil can't really stop him from doing so, the yellows now have a huge problem and it is the eight ball. Yeah, and does that safety shot tell us that the eight ball doesn't go? Probably. It, it might. When he played it, I thought he's not quite going to reach far enough to, to stop it going. But I think the fact that he didn't try and clear up there probably tells us that it doesn't. And that makes this a really interesting tactical exchange because there's no good way for Tom to, to break out the eight ball. Phil's going to get to work on his red on this bottom left corner of the table. And uh, something that doesn't often happen in our very first frame of the night, but we've got a, a real tactical exchange here, and this is where Phil Harrison will look to put on a little bit of a clinic, because these are the sorts of frames that Phil is very, very good at finding a way to win. Yeah, agreed. And for me, I feel, I feel like Phil came to the table as a massive second favourite, and I feel like it, he's, if anything, he's in front now, because he's put the eight ball safe. That eight ball doesn't go, and I'm sure it doesn't. Then I think Phil's in front. Quite like the choice of shot from Tom there, just to move his yellow into the middle of the table. Looks like Phil might try and play a loss of turn here. So he does. Important to note that's not a foul. It's a very useful shot, in fact, in international eight ball rules. You can pot your opponent's ball as long as you play a legal one yourself in doing so. The one thing that Phil will be disappointed with is I think the red and the yellow on the side cushion there have gone as a direct plant, which just means Tom will play it right back. But he needs to keep that cue ball safe. If he does play it right back, he has to get it safe. Yeah. And he's not guaranteed. He is an enigmatic player, is Tom Jones. Everything from the, the haircut to the cue action, you can't really take your eyes off him when he's at the table. So he's potted a ball there, I think, so he can get a better angle to play the loss of turn. So he can now, he's got the middle of the bottom cushion, not a massive margin of error. And he's come too far. He has left a red on. There's a chance now for Phil if he wants to take it on. He's missed the middle of the bottom cushion by so much. You almost wonder if he was just targeting just bottom right area of the table, but that seems no, hard to believe. Can't believe that. He must, he's just over hit the shot quite significantly. Mm -hmm. 
Phil will go. Could have been a little bit kinder. It could have been, could have been a lot kinder. He knew he didn't have a huge amount of control on it as it was hitting the second red and it, he couldn't really do much to avoid that. But the odds were in his favour to land on something and he hasn't landed on anything nice but he do, still has options down the table. I don't think he needs to play a cannon. I think the red will go. If he does need to play a plan and cannon, he could play it now. I don't think it's exactly as he wanted it, so he's going to take these in the other way around as in I think he was playing on the one by the eight ball but this is no bother whatsoever yeah no trouble at all and he's in perfect shape here to, to finish these off and you have to say the the shot selection for his first shot in this frame obviously other than the break to put that eight ball up the table was exceptional and that that shot alone is one in this frame it's just masterful yeah he he is one of the greatest players of all time. He's considered by many as part of their English eight ball pool, Mount Rushmore, if you like. And First break of the night for Tom Jones. He's going to be pretty sick to see that one break dry. He hit those pretty nicely. But I think we're dealing with a very fit, very different Phil Harris. And I know um, he's touched on it before, but, you know, difficulties in life over the last few years that I think is all kind of resolved now he's much happier in life and happier on the table and what he achieved in the second half of last year was was phenomenal and very quietly and quickly all of a sudden he's on three titles with ultimate ball and right in, right in a conversation with with a few players now that are on multiple titles probably should have had more attention for for player of the year last year I and mean, obviously Tom Cousins was the player of the year but Stevie Dempsey had a couple and and uh Chris Melling as well with a couple of titles, but so did Phil and he didn't get too much attention. He probably should have done. Phil's also one of, well, it's not actually true. He is the biggest critic of himself. <laughs> that is very true. He is, you know, for all the, for all the talk that others will talk about with Phil Harris, and you can see it in exhibition right here, he is so hard on himself, it's incredible. It's, it's almost like Phil Harrison thinks Phil Harrison is not very good, but he, that, it's so untrue. You could see he's just an incredibly humble guy, but he's, uh, he's very quietly gone about his business in a way that us sort of commentators, if you like, like, no, he will win at some point. He, he just will. And there were signs at the start of the year that his form was sort of coming back. And by the end of the year, difficult to stop him. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. The reason he is so hard on himself out there is that he, he's so such a perfectionist. He, he plays such a precise game, and if he's off by a ball here or there, he, he lets us know about it. Where's his heart on his sleeve out there? Sometimes too much, I'd say. Yeah, it's become and a bit of a running joke amongst the yeah. amongst the eight ball community that if Phil's shaking his head, he's probably in perfect position. But also, I think it, in the new. You know, modern era of Paul. You know, back in the day when it's a, a minute a shot, you can shake your head for 30 seconds if you like. But nowadays, it's completely different. You know, you're playing at 30 and 15 seconds a shot. You've just got to get on with it. And I think that's something he's had to really get to grips with. And the thing is, as well, is a lot of perceived wisdom coming into the ultimate pool era, if you like, was oh, Phil might struggle actually on a quick shot clock. He's quite a slow player. If you ever watch him in a tournament where there's no shot or match clock whatsoever, he can take a very long time about things. But his record on Monday nights is actually fantastic. Yeah. 
He's about to go 2 up in front here. Already won one title on Monday night. It's the very first one, the ultimate pool masters. Cue ball. He's okay this time, eight ball. Ooh, that eight ball was very close. He's actually got it moving towards that middle pocket on both his breaks so far. It's something to keep an eye on. So the only thing you would say it's not sort of incredibly consistent with Phil is he does chop and change his break a lot, depending on sort of what works for him at the time. Well, he has a, a more powerful break that he will go to if his controlled break, which is the one he is trying now, doesn't work. And he can really lose the cue ball then. It can get wild. He almost stands up on it, but I haven't seen him use that for quite a while. I think in these perfect conditions, you, you just get down and if you cue it well and time it well, you are going to get that explosion. And he certainly has in the first two here. And it's a, a beautiful opportunity for 3-0. For So clever at working. I mean, these finishes here, every ball goes, and you know we'd expect all the top players to make these. But he's normally so good at just finding the shot that makes it incredibly simple. So it is just drop-ins from there, and that's what the the very very best do when we talk about pattern play. That's what we're talking about. So that must be the red, must pass the eight ball to the centre. Yeah, it needs to be, needs to be well placed on, it, on every shot here. This is a lovely route he's worked out, but it still requires precision to finish it off. Even if he flicks the eight ball and you know, feathers it, it should hit the jaw and stay in, in good shape. But has a, a bit more margin of error than I was saying, but he, he will try and pop this clean. Well, an exhibition so far from Phil Harrison. Super stuff from the farmer. As I said when we were out in the arena just before we got going here, it, I'm looking for him just to, you know, it's almost, you know, simplify things to the point where he can be ultra clinical. <laughs> He'd actually given up on this break. He hit it really well. And his feeling here was that it was going to be dry again. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> You'd see the reaction and then one just <laughs> nicks in off the jaw and all of a sudden... He's, Here he's he is. He's, he's pointing to Phil Harrison. I was about on to say exactly that. He, <laughs> he's giving Phil Harrison a taste of the Phil Harrisons. <laughs> so a chance and a chance for a rapid clearance, which is what's needed for Tom if he's to get anything out of this match. We are already into the final five minutes, which means a 15-second shot clock. He's a very quick player, so he's one of those who, whilst no one likes 15-second shot clock, you fancy him to be okay on it. And as he said in his interview. He, he thinks the match clock almost suits him. He's had a few experiences on it with the Challenger Series last year in the main final and also with the Masters last season, which he did incredibly well and was a late drop-in and got all the way to the quarterfinals as an unranked entrant against some really, really good players and in style as well. This time it doesn't move at all. <laughs> Wouldn't you believe it, but it's dry as well. Yeah, well. Isn't that a commentator's curse and a half? Never managed to make a ball sit still before. Yeah. But <laughs> dry break as well for Phil, and all of a sudden Tom Jones will have an eye on this match. Because if he can get these yellows away, he'll have plenty of time to win another frame and potentially get a draw on his own break. Attacked his bad ball straight away there. He's attacked it again. Oh, he's, he's attacked it so much, he's made it bad again. Yeah. It will set for a double.
question whether he needed to there. It, it went. Did he need to go into it again? Because he could have sat on it. Well, that's and, three and, times he's broken yeah, it out. <laughs> and, and stuck on it and had no shot. So he, maybe he didn't need to go into it second time round. But, you know, three, three cannons into it. And he's finally got himself in a position to make the clearance, although he's not on the one bottom right as he was intending here. clearance this <laughs> it's fantastic to watch when he is in full flight and 3-2 we go oh Tom Jones does indeed break dry and I think he's got every right to feel agreed with this one Yeah, hit them well, but so did Phil in the previous frame, so, you know, what comes around, I guess. <laughs> so, no complaints from Phil here. If he's to, you know, mess up in this visit and, and Tom was to get another chance, then, you know, Phil can't complain. He, this is his opportunity to win the match. It's all there for him. Just go through this. He'll use the full 15 just naturally anyway. Not really, I mean, the eight ball's the only ball that needs some attention. The ball he's playing now actually would have been the perfect last ball. Yeah, it, the only thing that can go wrong for Phil here is is the clock, you feel. And it and that's, the reason why I say that is because there was a high profile game last season in playing Stevie Dempsey, where Phil time fouled in this exact scenario, he just had to run the clock out. He couldn't, yeah. and he couldn't lose essentially, but time foul, trying to be a little bit too clever. And Stevie Dempsey had one of the comebacks of all comebacks. So he just needs to guard against that. That's the sort of mistake that you don't tend to make twice. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to be great for the um, eight ball in terms of getting on the eight ball down the cushion. I, I suspect he's probably thinking double here, but. He is, oh, that's not ideal at all, amply queuing it. I was about to say he is one of the best doublers in the world. Well, Phil Harrison has still got this match in his hands, but Tom Jones is almost like, you can see he's, he's like a horse in the gate. He's ready to rumble. Yeah, Phil's not even made, the, made an effort for the clearance here. He has just run clock and he's done it exceptionally well. But, you know, this is, this is enough. As long as he doesn't foul on this shot as he pot the eight ball and foul, he's... Um, Got to win the match. Yeah, that will do from Phil Harris, and he's done enough. Super performance from the farmer, and Tom Jones has shown he's here to play tonight. Really, really good performance from both players, but it's Phil who picks up the win and gets his night off to a perfect start.